Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. Make yourselves indispensable. Written by Bonto Sil. An army marches on its stomach, but I'm quoting an old human general. Ambassador Lion Zaiho peers over the table at his adversity. Wasn't exactly the right word. To a uh, adversarial, he supposes, opponent was a better term. In any case, the Hazen met his gaze with an unwavering intensity. This meeting was a formality. The diplomatic AIs had already hashed the deal out, but there was something to be said for an in-person delivery. And the sinews of war are infinite money. Zaiho lets himself look impressed. Cicero, you did your homework. For a moment, there's silence over the table. Zaiho wavers for a moment, then decides to break character. If there was any reason to still let humans into the diplomatic corps, this was it. Are you sure you want to go down this path? You know what this means for your people. I know what it means for mine. All you have to do is call off your invasion. The hazen deflates. Four tentacles setting themselves down on the tabletop in a careful pattern. It means something unimportant right now. I do. You would sacrifice so much for a protectorate you didn't hold a scant generation ago. Zaiho nods once. Humans don't abandon their allies. Then we'll see who breaks first. Peace be with you, human. A cutting, ironic remark. Zaiho can appreciate the parting shot. If nothing else. Solar Federation total trade embargo with Hazen Collective. Tellurium prices skyrocket as Hazen Justico War begins in earnest. Ignis stock index tumbles in record sell-off of agricultural assets. Pestle's stomach growls. He clamps down on his hunger, clutching his heavy rifle until it hurts. He hadn't gotten anything in the last two days. Normally, no problem. He could deal. If it wasn't only one meal between the last two days stretch without meals. If the last convoy hadn't shown up with the ration crates half filled with foam to make shit seem full. If he could sit and rest for a day without an airstrike or ambush. If he could just eat something. This invasion was supposed to be easy. A weak opponent, an ally unwilling to protect them with their own bodies. But then, then he ended up here. There was a village up ahead. He can see it tucked away, nestled in the valley they were supposed to be attacking tomorrow morning. Lights glow in the gloomy night. They weren't afraid of artillery. They had active protection systems, denser than anything they'd ever seen outside of consulate bunkers. They also probably had food, hot food, with spices and fat and warm drinks. He catches himself salivating at the thought. Almost catches himself starting to walk towards them. Gods below. Who would be so easy? A cly into the valley. They write gestures. The right words. A cly into the valley. The right gestures. The right words. And he'd be fed, even if he were shot. He wouldn't be starving anymore. His rifle clatters to the ground. He was alone. The internal surveillance systems had run out of batteries. Only a week into the advance. Sure, maybe they'd take the town in the morning. Maybe he'd be discovered, captured, dragged up into a court with a gun to his head. His fate sealed from that moment onwards. He started walking, shucking off his armor. If he was going to be executed, he at least wanted one full stomach before it happened. Belai puts one hand out. Shoving the hazen woman back with one hand, the power of reinforcement in his suit whirring. She hisses, something vulgar at him, and he has to fortitude to ignore it. The food storehouse was built like a bunker, low and square, fitting enough for the siege it found itself under. Just hold, soldiers, his commander intones. Easy for him to say. He was safe, secured away in some deep control bunker, maybe even in an orbiting ship. And he was probably eating right now. Senior officers still got military rations. Judy enlisted. Shed out of luck. Get what you can find. He digs in against another surge of the crowd, gently pushing away a couple who tries to snatch away his rifle. They were just desperate. 
He bore them no ill will, no need to hurt them. Was he desperate? Probably. He hadn't eaten a square meal in a week. He refused to loot, couldn't really steal without being punished. As desperate as these people. He takes a look at them. One civilized people given in to animal desperation. Their faces twist with hate and rage at him. He was an obstacle standing between them and survival. And who was he to deny them that? Maybe. Maybe if he let them in, he could eat. The next time the crowd searches, he goes with them. The hazen looks gone. The eye, the plate, and the snacks on the table between themselves and the zaiho with an undistinguished envy. Help yourself. It was obvious the hazen hadn't eaten in some time. But Ziho watches without judgment. Maybe even a little sympathy. They finish and collect themselves, staring off into space before speaking. This is how you win, isn't it? You make yourselves indispensable somehow. Food, or yetrium, or heavy water or something. He nods once. Yes, that's how we win. No number of guns are useful if you can't feed your operators. The hazen lets out a sigh. They sound defeated. Rightfully so. Even then, Ziho can't summon up any sense of victory. Just pity. It was a terrible thing you did, you know. My people will feel pain for generations. He lowers his head. I know. And if it makes you feel better, I am truly sorry that path was chosen by both of us. I will not justify it. I will not make excuses. I can only say that I think it was the right thing. He holds his pose for a couple more moments before looking up. Do you accept? The Hazen Collective accepts your offer to entry into the Solar Federation. They say in a flat monotone. Food aid shipments will begin tomorrow. Humanity doesn't abandon its allies. He stands and bows to the Hazen representative. As gentle a smile as he can manage on his face. Maybe it was patronizing. Maybe it was comforting. Either would do. Peace be with you, representative. End of story. Story number two. Po-te-toes. Written by Dragonson04. The human home world of Earth is a fascinating place. By galactic standard, it is amongst the harshest place to ever produce sentient life, let alone an intelligent and star-bearing civilization. Describing the planet as extreme doesn't quite do it justice. The humans are not really specialized in any field of study or work, but they can turn their hands to anything with the right training. They are nothing, if not adaptable. They are, in a word, tough, various levels, and different kinds of tough, but tough nonetheless. As a botanist, however, I am more interested in telling you of a particular plot that grows on Earth. As no doubt you've already read or heard hundreds of stories about the all manner of human behavior. With thousands of varieties of native to a single mountain range and their ability to grow almost anywhere on earth, they are incredible. Humans call it a potato, or the humble potato, if you want to be a bit poetic about it. For something that grows on a death world, it is completely benign, even to non-human stomachs. Wash, peel, boil, and mash. Even the most delicate of digestive constitutions can handle plain mashed potatoes. Though, the humans like to mix sodium chloride and processed animal fats to just make it as edible by their standards. Even for them, plain ones are too bland. But the blandness comes nearly infinite varieties of way to prepare them. From the aforementioned mashed to fried slices in various sizes, making them whole and covering them with all manner of toppings, making bread, making candy, and even more. You are only limited by your imagination. And, as is typical of humans, they have learned how to make some of their strongest intoxicating beverages from this tuber. As I learned about this plot, I started to see similarities between humans and potatoes. Humans have so many different cultures, skin colors, and religious beliefs but all of them are human beliefs. Potatoes have thousands of different types, all under the heading of potato. Their jack-of-all-trades mentality means that they can learn just about anything, like a potato, 
They are rather plain and can be made to be anything that you can imagine. The potato is a jack of all trades as well. I am told that a human can survive on nothing but potatoes with their skins and the processed animal fats mentioned above for weeks on end as long as they have properly clean water as well. Humans spread across their planet and are starting to spread through the galaxy. They grow where they are planted, providing they have enough basic resources, like a potato, which they grow on 90% of their colonies, so the comparison works for both, and they still grow them all over their home world. However, it may surprise you to know that the potato is a member of a family of plants that is poisonous. For all I've said about its bland nature and uses, the green parts are toxic. Several types of potato are actually more toxic than others and can even lay a human low. So like a potato, certain humans are more deadly than others. Most are completely unobtrusive and calm, but you still need to tread carefully. You need to know the exact variety of human you are dealing with before you deal with them. Otherwise, an upset stomach may be the least of your worries. And, as you know, there are few things that even an average human can't lay low. Excerpt from Plant Life and Death Worlds, Earth Edition, by Professor Orno Thanar. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon, WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.